Dr. Jeffrey Weitzel and Kathleen Blazer are here. They are our education awardees. Congratulations and thank you for joining us. So talk a little bit about your collaboration. Collaboration is what it is and it's also, um, gosh, almost another life. Um, Kathy was the first genetic counselor who rotated through my clinic at the City of Hope when I started the department. And I'll put it this way, she was a mature candidate and um, had already had careers under her belt. And as soon as I got a grant, first grant, hired her. And so, um, as they say, the rest is history. Been 22 years since then. Kathleen, why is that education about genetics and genomics so important for people? If you can't see a better example of how technology is ahead of society than in our field, um, the problem is is that whenever we're we're coming up with all these rapid changes in genomic information and ways of accessing it, and being able to understand how to use that information with patients is a tremendous daunting daunting you know uh, job and in fact it's uh, it's something that we have struggles to keep up with even though we're really working with the evidence base so when you think about people out in the community out in the front lines who are trying to understand and incorporate this into their practices it's a tremendous you know issue for them and so the more we can do to help make that easier for them is that's what education is all about it points out how critical continuing education is for caregivers yeah and also this is a unique niche because genetics isn't new we've been studying genetics for many many years centuries I'd say and reality is is that um, we all have sort of serendipity in our lives I was in oncology I was going to be a bone marrow transplanter and ended up looking at some of the first forensic DNA markers. And around the same time, historically, where when we were starting, um, BRCA1 was localized. All of the mismatch repair genes that go with hereditary colon cancer were identified. And so, um, as I say today, pivoted to the fact that oncology and genetics are too far apart. And um, I did formal training in both, and I said nobody should ever have to do that again. I had to do both. To, to practice what we practice. And similarly, I was the first rotation that they had, as he mentioned, at City of Hope because that this interprofession didn't exist. And uh, so the, the issue was when we realized we were always an interprofessional group. We had a doctoral nurse, we had, I was their first genetic counselor, and Dr. Weitzel, who's both boarded in medical oncology and genetics, which is a kind of a rare bird. Um, we always practiced that way, and education was always at the cornerstone of our mission. And so when we started to evolve this, this program, it really was for genetics or oncology professionals to be able to come together and learn from one another, share expertise, and evolve this whole field, this burgeoning field of cancer genomics. If you had to give advice to someone else, what do you think is the key to the success of City of Hope's Cancer Genetics Education Program? I think that it's grounded in the real world context. I think that's the most important thing. So the program is really geared for working professionals, and as you mentioned, the idea of a clinician needing to be able to stay on top of, of, new, of new findings. Um, that's what our target is. And these are clinicians who are often in areas where they're not accessing or have far access to academic centers and, and being able to really stay on top of the evidence base. And so being able to bring in the expertise of really thought leaders in the field of cancer genomics and put them together in the room with people with their own expertise from the community standpoint and then keep them together because after the core learning happens and it's a, it's, it's a blended program of distance and face-to-face uh, -face learning, really what happens is they take this all of these resources back to their practices and they stay with us. We, call, we kind of call it the Hotel California. And so they present challenging cases, the same kinds of challenges that we're faced with when we're ordering a genetic test and it's complex and the results are difficult to interpret. They present their cases to us. They have us as a, as a lifeline to be able to connect to the evidence base, to get, connect to what really do we do with these challenging cases. Where are the guidelines going on a day-to-day -day basis? And it's making a difference. <laughs> Thank it, it, you. It for is all making you a do. difference. And you know, I think Kathy is quite right about that. The other thing is that we bring an edge to the programs as well. And um, where the innovation comes is um, even though 
I might have my boards in two different specialties. Kathy got her doctorate in education while she was working full time at the City of Hope. And so she brought a level of professionalism to what we were doing and that shows in the way our team works. So we're here for a team award and we have an amazing team beyond the two of us sitting here. It's like the whole cast. Well, it's very clear why you are the education awardees. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dean.